Hello, you two. Hello. And we're... We are here with the new Dragon 8. This is the CBT right now. I might upload it after it. Most likely I will upload it after it so it won't be a thing anymore. So, this... This game is amazing, okay? It's really, really fun to play, but I'm not too sure about the balancing and how it works because I haven't checked out too many of the characters. But I know how Kazuya works and what changed and what not, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So, right now, right now, that was like 30 FPS gaming. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're good now, right? 60 FPS, we're good. So, Kaz and Dagon 8, we're gonna talk about the changes. So, the biggest changes we got are something like, for example, Tom Back 2, right? You already saw this in the CMT. Doesn't knock down anymore. I'm gonna put a clip on Dagon 7, like right there, somewhere. It's gonna be in the middle, you guys will see it. So it knocks down Dagon 7, in Dagon 8, it does this, whatever this is. And on conference, it knocks down, right? It does that. So that's one of the biggest changes, because for me, I love Dawn Back 2. Right? That's a big ass change. The other big change is uh, CBT exclusive. <coughs> Sorry about this, by the way. I have a little bit of a cold, so if I sound if I sound weird, that's why. So side step three. Also, one of the big changes. It doesn't do one hit what it did in Dragon Seven, but it does the same thing on counter. Right? And you get a mini combo, whatever. So in Dragon Seven, I'm gonna. Put the clip there in the middle as well. Sidestep 3 does that nor in normal hit. Whatever Tekken 8 Sidestep 3 does on counter hit, in Tekken 7, Kazuya does on normal hit. So that's important to know. That's a big, big change. Like, that's a pretty big change in my opinion. Very important. Other big changes that's also like pretty good to notice is something like Down 1 plus 2, for example. If you guys uh, see on the bottom left corner, uh, attack startup frames, it says 23. So the startup frames right now, in Dagon uh, 7, are 25. I'm gonna showcase it as well. I don't know if the frames will, sh will show, but you can tell that it's way, way slower. It's 23 in Dagon 8, and it's 25 in Dagon 7. But the properties are exactly the same. Right? Even the counter property, you can just launch after all. You get a launcher. That's also an important change. Now let's talk about this move. I talk about this move a lot whenever I play gods in Dagon 7 as well. And I have to talk about it right now in Dagon 8. So this move. This plus 8. And the properties more or less. I think everything has changed. Except for the block part. Property. On block it's still minus 9. Just like in Dagon 7. But the big difference is, in Dagon 7, this gives plus 13. Get away. So this gives plus 13 instead of plus 8, but gives way more distance. So this pushes back very, very far in Dagon 7. So I think this is better even though it's less plus. So plus 8 right in your face, pretty good. But the big difference here is this right here. On counter hit, I don't know what happened there. On counter hit, you actually get the old Uragen counter property. When you can, you know, you can even health sweep here, get the easy forward for four. When Dagon 7, you don't have that. It doesn't do anything on counter hit. So, this is a big buff, and in general, this is a very good move to use. Right? Even if you cancel it in your Weibu's, it's good. I feel like Weibu is a little bit smoother. So, yeah. Maybe canceling it will be a little bit easier. That's an important change. Also, down forward one. I just want to mention this like briefly. Down forward one, Dagon seven has a much better hitbox in my opinion. So this got nerfed just a little bit, and I'm pretty sure they nerfed it because uh, down forward one, down forward two is our new screw now. So if you do like electric, down forward one, down forward two, this is our new screw. So they did it so it wouldn't be too easy to combo like after like I don't know three electrics, right? We do this. So they nerfed the hitbox there. I'm pretty sure that's why they did it. But it doesn't matter what doesn't matter why they did it, they did it, right? So the hitbox on this is worse. That's just a fact. That's how it is. Oh, and the one of the biggest nerfs, in my opinion, one of the biggest nerfs is uh, removing back to one. I'm gonna put a clip of back to one on Tekken 7. In the middle of the screen, you guys will see it. 
So we do not have back to one anymore in Decade 8. Back two, we still have it. We still have back to four. Get away. But we don't have back to one, we have back to two. Which is a middle middle, mid mid. It's entirely different move and it's not a screw. So if it's back to two, it doesn't do anything. And back to one was one of the things that made those three electric combos possible. For so for example, if you do three electrics, right? Do back to two, this would work, but it doesn't screw. But back to one, it would screw in deck and seven. It's, it does. It's like a staple combo, more or less. So it's very, very important to change for Kazuya players. So your combo utility is pretty much down the drain because we don't have back to one anymore. So no more fancy three electric combos most of the time anyway. There are some combos with three electrics, like three electric down four, down one, down four, two, but let's not talk about that. I'm not talking about combos here. I'm pretty sure there are going to be a lot of people saying how Kazuya's combos, uh, not saying, but showing Kazuya's combos and how hard they can be and how cool they can be. But I'm not, I'm not there for that. So that's an important change. Other than that, one of the one also very very good change. This uh, buff is the downward three strip. I'll show the Tekken Seven version as I as I did before, and then I'll show the Tekken Eight version. So in Tekken Seven, whenever we do downward three two into the one, when you finish the string, it's minus eighteen if I remember correctly. It will show on the screen. It's, it's very very punishable. It's very easily launch punishable. But now in Tekken Eight, as you guys will see. If they block it, it's minus 14 instead of minus 18, which is very, very big because this opens up opportunities to use this move a lot more without taking the risk of getting launched. Unless you're going up against Brian or or Lars or someone with a good 40 frame punisher. You get what I mean. You get what I mean. So it's still a buff. A buff's a buff. And the counter property is still the same as in Dragon 7. This is a good counter hit get a free electric here, right? Into a normal combo. Pretty, pretty big damage. So, very good to know. And not to mention in Tekken 8, you get a charge up version, which is a lot of plus. So plus 11 without the wall. And with the wall, it's gonna be even more plus. So, this is a good buff. The other things you have to talk about is the new things we got. We didn't get too many new stuff, but the new things we got were still, still very useful, like down back one. It's very very good. This is a very good move because us in general in Tekken 7 lacked a good with Punisher, which was a mid. Outside of down forward one, right? Because down forward one's range wasn't that good. Like the range in Tekken 8, like horizontal hitbox, is almost identical. So it, it wouldn't reach far away opponents if you use down forward one as a bit with Punisher. Down forward four worked a little bit more consistently. But since now we have down back one which is very fast, it is 13. You can use this as a whiff punisher, as long as it's not too far, right? And go into heat instantly. So it's a very, very good move, and you can use this as a whiff punisher pretty freely, even on moves that recover on high crush. So you don't need to electric everything, right? Okay, that's good to know. The other thing is we have a new Fort 4 2. So Tekken 7 Fort 4 2, it's gone. Not, not there anymore. Maybe I'll, I'll show that as well. I guess 7 4 4 2 is uh, high. 4 4 2 gets high. And uh, if they don't hold back, it gets into 4 4 4. But most of the time, they will hold back. Right? But it does a lot of damage. And it used to be a, like a combo ender for damage. It dealt a lot of damage, basically. So its uh, utility was either damage dealing at the end of combos. Or you could punish stuff like... I don't know. Hey, Hutch 4 4 2. But that won't be a problem anymore in Tekken 8. Most likely anyway. We're not gonna see Heihachi. So yeah, the new Fort 4 2 looks like this. So on hit, it does go in heat. And on block, it is safe, minus 9. Some of you guys might find this very similar. It's because we actually have this move in Tekken 7. It's a very similar move anyway. This is uh, Devil Gazia's Fort 4 2. It has the same startup frame, 16. But the big difference is the properties on hit and on block. Devil Gaz is on block properties is minus 12, so it's punishable. In Tekken 7, I mean. In Tekken 8, as you guys can see, it's safe in minus 9. 
and it has pushback on block, so it's really, really good. So this move, in my opinion, port 42, is the best move he has right now. 100% the best move he has. Maybe electric can be better because it's an electric. But we're gonna talk about electrics a little bit later. But yeah, port 42 is amazing. The other new move he also got, which is another mid, is this Parasite Fist. I remember the name because it was a cool name. It's called the Parasite Fist. There's a 24 frame low, not low, mid, which comes from a wave dash. This is a CD 1 plus 2. So this can be kind of working as a... What's it called? It can work as a mix-up, basically. Mid mix-up. If they duck a hell sweep, they might get hit by this. It is slow, but the animation it has is um, not revealing, basically. Because it can blend very well with the wave dash. So if they duck it, they'll get hit and, you know, knock down. And if they block it, it's minus 6. Not even minus 9, right? It's safe, a lot of pushback, and only minus 6. So it's a good move. The only weakness this move has is that it's very, very easily steppable. So if you wave wave a lot, like this, you know, and try to realign, that would be good. But just be careful because it's very easily steppable. Oh, and... I, I forget, before I forget, counter hit is a launcher. Not only is it the launcher, it's a very high damaging launcher. Like even if you do something as easy as this, right? 76 damage. Pretty good damage for an easy combo. So, yeah. It's a good move, 100% a good move. But it needs its own utility, you have to know when to use it. Uh, other than that, the other new move, which I already mentioned, is back to two. So this move... I still can't believe this, by the way, that back to two is a mid-mid, but it's punishable. It's minus ten. Right? I still don't can't believe it's minus ten. I, I thought this would be safe before I started playing, right? So it's minus ten, they can actually punish you with a ten framer. But it has an extension. Back to two, one plus three. This laser. So if they try to punish you, they will actually get hit by the laser. But the mind game is that if they duck the laser because it's a high, you will get, you basically get punished for it. You'll get launched. So the mind game is not in your favor at all. So this move, it's a little bit iffy. Oh, it's the same with down back one. Down back one is also minus ten, which is insane to me. Insane, insane. Oh, and I, before I forget, the new string. This string right here, as you guys can see, it's not natural. Got nerfed. So the third hit is still punishable, minus 11, and the last hit is still minus 90. The only way you can use this trick is as a wall combo. This is your most damaging wall combo almost all the time. Most of the time, it's gonna be this. Okay. Let's see, I forgot. Let's uh, recap a little bit, see if I forgot something. So, 4 4 2. I talked about, it's your best move, 100%. You abuse this as your mid mix up, as your check in general, it's very good. And use hell sweeps and 442s, like this, you know? Oh, I almost forgot. The hell sweep vortex leaves them a little bit further. Just a little bit further than Dagon 7. So be a little bit careful with vortexing. Because your hell sweep, like this one for example, can whip a little bit more easier because they're a little bit further away. At least from what I understand. So be careful about that. Okay, what else? Oh, 2-2. Two, two. It's also a very, very important change. So 2-2, two, two, deck at 7. I'll show it as well. Deck at 7. We have 2-2 two, two as a Punisher. It's a 12 frame Punisher that does 36 damage. But in Tekken 8, it's not a normal hit combo anymore. But, in exchange, now it's safe, it's minus 8. Right? Of course, on counter hit, it's still a combo. 38, because it's a counter hit, but normally it will deal 36. So, yeah, now we have a safe high mid to check with. So something like, I don't know, down back 4 on hit, 2-2, two, two, it's okay to do. Or port 4 on block, 2-2. Two, two. It's also okay to do. Check people who like to, you know, press after them. Because it's safe, on counter it's guaranteed, and not to mention that if they get countered by the second hit, it's 
still has the same property as in Megan 7. You get this this launch. The sideway launch. So yeah, 2-2. Two, two. It's a good move. It's still good to use, but now it's just not a Punisher anymore. You can't use it as a Punisher. Like, I'm one of the people that still uses it as a Punisher in Degan 8. Because I love 2-2 two, two in Degan 7. But now we gotta do back to what? I mean, back what to? This is your Punisher now. Either this, or you can use this as a third frame Punisher as well. You can also use 1 plus 2, but no, less damage. Or, like a true Mishima, true Mishima player, 1-1-2, one, one, literally everything. Doesn't matter how much minus they are, 1-1-2. One, one, Best move. The other changes we got is uh, we have a new health sweep, for example, this one. But the only utility I found for this is that when you think your health sweep is gonna whiff, like you're wave wing and you think your health sweep is gonna whiff, then you do the 4 instead of the 1, because it's high and it's safe, right? That's good. The other utility is when you're right behind, when your opponent is right behind the wall that can break. Like a floor, not floor break, but balcony break. So when you do this, not only does will, this will deal more damage than this. This does 31, this does 33. But this will also more consistently break it, because it's a more straightforward angle. Instead of this, changing uh, the angle of the camera a little bit more, right? So that's the utility it has anyway. Okay, what else? I talked about down back 2, 2-2, two, two, down forward 3 string, Urag and port 4 2. So all this shit, these are like the biggest changes for me. Oh, I almost forgot. So the biggest thing for me, literally the biggest thing, is the 3-1 wave dash. So in the closed network test, I also played that. The 3-1 wave dash was a very, very cool combo extender. You could literally do like this is the 3-1, wave will cancel, another 3-1. But now they nerfed it. Now they added a, a recovery animation to it. It's still doable, but it's way, way harder to do. So even something like 3-1 cancels here, after 1 electric, so 3-1 cancel, down for 1, down for 2. Even this isn't that easy to do. Right? So this is one of the biggest nerfs because now Azio's combos feel very very stiff and clunky. One of the biggest reasons for that is of course the, the thing I mentioned, we don't have back to one anymore, we have this. But now since they removed 3-1 combos, well they didn't remove it, they just made it very hard. But since they we don't have that anymore, it's a little bit weird. Like he's not as fun to play anymore, personally for me. But, he's not bad at all. Like, I don't think he's a bad character. A lot of people kind of exaggerated when they first saw it. Maybe they still are exaggerating that they're saying he's bad. But I don't think he's bad. But maybe compared to everyone else, the one thing he doesn't have, which is like a Kazuya special, is that you cannot abuse his moves. You cannot abuse his new moves. Like, for example, you can, in Tekken 8, you can pick Law, you can pick Warang, you can pick Raven, you can pick Azucena, I don't know, you can pick whoever you want and abuse the new moves because people will not know how to deal with them. But you do not have any of that. Almost any of that. The closest thing you have to that is just spamming this. And maybe they don't punish it on block, right? Because they don't know it's minus 19. That's the only thing you have. While other characters will literally use plus frames upon plus frames. And you won't know when to press. So you don't have knowledge checks is what I'm saying. But that's just Kazuya in general. It's his identity, it's been like that in Dragon 7, and I'm guessing it's still gonna be like that even when the game releases. And I don't mind it. I really, really don't mind it. Because Kazuya is one of the characters that, that needs to know the opponent's character the most. It's just how it is. Yeah, Magic 4 also one of the changes. Almost forgot to mention it. But it's just a universal change in Dragon 7. Not 7. Dragon 8. You don't have Magic 4 counter comms anymore, unless it's an extent extension to a magic form, like a law 4-3, right? So now we just get a port for the port for four. This is guaranteed. Very, very good to know. So, I said that the Gazi is that bad, right? Why did I say that? I say that because we have this move. Not this one. What the fuck? This one. Port 4-2. Four 
But this move literally redeems the character. If we didn't have this move, maybe even this move, and the rocket. Like these three moves. Well, it, I think it's mostly Forge 4 2 and the rocket in my opinion. These two moves redeem the character. Now he's playable. Now he's doable. Now he's decent. And now we can win with him. But if they touch these moves and nerf it, then I don't know what to say. But for now, it's good. Because now we can do Hell Sweep, right? With the Forge 4 2 mix up. They do Hell Sweep. To a hell sweep mix up, right? Port 4 2 works really well because it's a safe option, it's a safe mid. It's very fast and it's decent on hit. Goes into heat and you just mix them up with heat. I'll talk about heat a little bit later. Now I want to talk about electrics. And after the electrics, I'm going to talk about heat mode. So, electrics is one of the things that didn't change, right? But what changed is the overall movement of Deganate. So, since the overall movement, the sidestepping is a little bit better, you can sidestep a little bit easier in Deganate than in Degan 7. Your electrics don't track that well anymore. They can be pretty much more easily sidestepped. And uh, when it comes to female characters, they can sidestep it sometimes to the right as well, which is almost unspeakable and unheard of in Degan 7. Because sidestepping electrics to the right is basically a death sentence. But in here, some female characters can't do it. Depends on the situation, right? But still. As I said, in Dagon 7, that's unheard of. Maybe unless you're playing Lily, but... You get what I mean. So yeah, Electrix got nerfed because of that. And the other thing I want to mention is the down 4. So generic down 4s. All of them got nerfed. In Dagon 8, generic down 4s are minus 4 on hit. All of them. Doesn't matter if back turn or not. And on block, they're minus 15. This means they are launch punishable by everyone but Kazuya. So, why am I saying but Kazuya? Because most of the time when this will get blocked, your TP will most likely whiff. Most likely. So everyone else will have a very good punish, like a 15 frame long range bit punish, right, to launch this. But Kaz, most likely, will not be able to do this. Because it will not reach. Because the TP range, as you guys can see, is not that good. Like the range on this is really not that good. Like if a down 4, if I block a down 4 here, I would not be able to launch it, or even here. Most of the time, that's going to be the range down for it's going to get blocked. I'm a little bit ashamed that I can't really test it because I can't record the opponent to do a down 4. But, yeah. I think that's going to be very, very big for us. Because people will be able to abuse it a little bit more without getting launch punished. Even though it's still minus 4, not as good to use it anyway, even though you can't launch punish it. But, since we literally can't launch it, it's a very big deal. That down 4 basically got buffed against Kazuya, is what I mean. More or less. Not buffed, but everyone else can launch it, but Kazuya can't. It's, it's stuff, stuff like that matters sometimes. But we'll see. Maybe they're gonna change something about that. Maybe increase TP range, please? Please? I would love that. Because something something like uh, Jin's down back 4, for example. If I block it like a backdash block, I want to be able to launch that as well. I've that happened to me yesterday when I played against a gym player in Dagon 8. So yeah, that would be a great change. Please do that. Oh, and uh, the change I forgot to mention is this one, forward 1 plus 2. So this move in Dagon 7, as you guys will see, is a wall bounce, which mechanic doesn't exist anymore in Dagon 8. Dagon 7, you set the wall, if they get hit, you get a combo. They will bounce off the wall, you get a screw, whatever, right? But that mechanic doesn't exist anymore, and this is just a normal wall spot now. And every other mechanic is the same. It's still minus 9, just like in Dagon 7. But the big, big difference on block is that it doesn't have pushback anymore. So in that regard, it got nerfed. But the big buff that it got is that it's a punch parry now. So for example, let's, let's see if I can actually like show you guys. 
Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Let's do Mimic. Standing block into Mimic. Okay, doesn't work. How about this, right? There we go. So it's a punch parry now. And punch parries like this. It's a very cool punch parry and dwell splats. So it's really, really cool. Very, very good buff. Because I think Kazuya kind of needed the punch parry. By the way, guys on YouTube, you guys should commend me for demonstrating it like that. Because it's very hard to actually make the opponent do something. I'm taking eight. Yeah. It's a big brain like that. So yeah, those are the changes. Now let's talk about heat. In heat, let's say you do 442, get hit, damn it. And you go into heat. Of course you have a heat smash, which is a low. So this is a fast low, basically like a demo man of false. And it's minus 14 on block. So it's way, way safer than a health soup is. Unless you go up against Lars or Brian. Way safer. So, if you use the slow, you're much more safer than you would use the health suit. But in heat, you have a lot of other options as well. But heat, right now, let's actually be in perma heat. Activate heat. There we go. We have some nerfs as well, because this is the same as Devil Mode. But Devil Mode Dagon 7 was different. In Dagon 7 you could only access Devil Mode in Rage. In Dagon 7, Devil Electric for example, it's a high in here, it was a mid there. So that's a nerf, but didn't really count as a nerf. Because it's so easy to go into Devil in Dagon 8. But in Dagon 7 you needed Rage for it. So this is no longer a mid, and also, this, if they crouch it, doesn't guarantee anything anymore. It's just a normal forward 4. But in Tekken 7, if this hits crouching opponents, you get a guaranteed elect electric. Or a down forward 1 too. So that's a very, very big change for, uh, for Devil. But it's an understandable change because he would be really broken if he had all that while in heat. Because it's so easy to go into heat. So, yeah. Those are very, very big changes. The other stuff is that he still has the health sweep extension like this with the dual animation, right? And this still floor breaks. It's very, very important because in floor break stages, Devil is going to be way more powerful, way, way more powerful because of that health sweep trend. And you also have the option to just not go into the animation if you just hold back. So it's very good if you want to, you know, keep, keep mixing them up or get a wall splat. Very, very good. Other than that, you have 442, the new animation that does a lot more damage, right? 40 damage. Pretty decent. Takes off heat, but it's whatever. It's still worth the use. And, um, what else? You have some other moves like Sacks of 2 from Devil. You have Up Laser, which can be used as like a combo extender like this, right? It's kind of used, I don't know if it's worth it. But yeah, I think those are like the big things. The biggest things anyway. Oh, and one thing about the uh, Devil as well, is that the Uragan counter it also becomes stronger. Because now you get all of this from that counter hit. And if you can floor break as well, GG well played, right? So yeah, Uragan becomes way more powerful when, they're, when you're in Devil form. As long as you get the counter hit, right? Why else? Oh, one more cheeky thing is this. CD3 on block. This is a plus frame move. It says plus four, but most of the time it's plus three. Do not do not get like I'll show you. Wait. I don't want the fellow Gazia players to get baited. So it's plus three, there you go. Do not down for two there. I was actually baited by this. I thought it was plus four, but it's only plus four in close range. Long range is plus three. So you will lose to jabs if you're down for two. Do not get baited. Okay. 
What else? Oh, one of the changes I also forgot to mention. Yeah, let's get out of the heat. It's 4-3. The 4-3 is 2 frames faster now. So instead of 19, now it's 17. As you guys can see. It's still punishable, it's minus 13. And... The big thing is that now everyone can punish it. No matter who you are, it doesn't have that much pushback anymore. So almost everyone can punish this now on block. But against 7, that wasn't the case. It had much more range, so something like this... It whiffs here, deck and 8, right? But against 7, this would hit. It had that much more range. And on block, it was e also harder to punish. But the other properties are the same. Like something like this, for example. Oh god. The counter 4 3 is still the same. Yeah. Yeah, back 4 also one of the changes, but it's not too big of a change. It's still the same kind of move. The only change is that now it goes to the heat. Basically, basically that. Hmm. What should I talk about? But yeah, his heat is most of the time a lot of like mix up oriented. Oh, I almost forgot that you have a parry in heat now. That's not a parry. This right here. Kind of a power crush like a parry. This can be very useful if you want them to, you know, get away from you. They're pressuring you way too much. Just do this, stay away from me. Also very important move to know. Hmm. What else? In, in Dagon 8, there's been like... A, quite a lot of stuff. But also not a lot of stuff at the same time. Especially with Gods. With Gods, didn't get too much stuff. Oh, the thing is, there's also one thing you got. Is this stomp. The Hell Sweep. You do this. Or, you know, you can use whatever the hell you want there. It's a little bit harder. Did I just... Yeah, I don't have heat. That's why. You can use CD1 plus 2 as a mid, for example. I think you can cancel this as well with like a rocket and stuff, but I don't know the exact timing. But I don't find this stomp that useful, personally anyway. The best moves in heat to use is 442. It's very very good. The hell sweep extension is also very good. Heat smash obviously is very good, especially when you want the load that will also stay safe. Dot back 444 is also very very good, but that's in general very good to use like these two moves. Hmm. Well, wow, electrics. Of course, they're very good in general. When it comes to combos, the combo utility of Gaz, I find that's like the biggest problem of it. If, he, if they fix his combos, because his combos are very, very wonky, for example, 4 4 3, you have to like do this kind of shit for like decent damage, right? And I feel like it's very, very wonky. And it, you can't do like electrics into combo. You can't do that anymore because back to one is gone. Oh, and I almost forgot. Before I forget. Again, let's do talk about 4-4-3. So 4-4-3, second 7, it doesn't have this kind of spike. I'll show it, I'll show how it looks like. Second 7, now second 8, it has the Cosmic 4 4 4 kind of spike, and you have way more time to combo. But the downside is, your combo actually is much weaker here. Even though it should be stronger theoretically, it's much weaker. Second 7, I'll, I'll show a, I'll show a screen about it. On 443, you can do like double electrics back to one, into back through one. You'll see the combo. It's like 78 damage or something like that. A lot of damage with a lot of wall carry. It hits the wall. You can actually do the wall combo into almost 100 damage, right? But in here, you do like the size of three combo, which is like kind of decent staple, right? Into I don't know something like this. It doesn't even do 70 damage. It's like decent, it's not bad damage, but you get what I mean. The combos are much weaker even though they should be stronger. And the one thing they also changed about this, in the bottom left corner, if you guys notice the damage, it says 21 there. That means that 443 does 21 damage on hit. And in against 7, if I remember correctly, it does 25. So they nerfed the damage even though they changed the property of it. So that's important to know. 
yeah, I guess that's about it. So Tekken 8, guys, a lot of changes, a lot of, not a lot of new stuff, but decent new stuff. His game plan is mostly the same, and I don't think he's bad, but I don't think he's that good either. Like, he's kind of normal, you know, more or less. This, this string no longer, I think, is not broken anymore. Obviously, this string was get, gonna get nerfed, and no one expected this to not get nerfed. So, now, I want to talk about, before I finish the vid, I want to talk about Kazuya and why I think he's still good. His game plan is more or less the same. You have to space a lot. But since movement is a bit better, like sidestep electrics are going to be a little bit better to do, for example. And your backdash isn't that bad either. Like, backdash is a bit worse than Tekken 8, but I don't think Kazuya's backdash is that bad. Not that bad at all. So, your game plan, more or less the same. Keep out the electrics, we love them, use them, abuse them. Be careful, easily steppable. They try to step, Uraken. That's what you do. You do this. Oh, that, I almost forgot about this one. This new move. You Uraken, this tracks really well. If they step into buttons or just buttons in general, you get a pretty good comfort with either a health sweep like this or 444. Good, you're still safe. Hard thing about this is that you have to cancel it. Good thing about this is that if you mess up the cancel, you get this move. You don't get the CD1 anymore like in Tekken 7. Which is like with one of the biggest buffs for Rocket in my opinion. They don't sidestep too much, you want to mix them up, 442. But even if they sidestep, you can actually realign your 442. So your 442 is just good in general. It's your best move, as I said. Wave wave with your 442. It's your mix up duo. The Hell Sweep, Wave Wu442. I messed up. Right? Hell Sweep, Wave Wu Hell Sweep. The, the bot blocked it, but you get what I mean. It's a mix up, so it's really good. And if it hits, you're going to heat into, you know, super mix up mode. Well, more or less super mix up mode. So, yeah, that's good. Your Tom Back 4 is still a good poke. Port 4 is still very good to use. Down back 2 is useless now, more or less useless, don't use it. Why would you use it? I'm really sad to say this, but yeah, why would you use it? Down back 1, so this is your whiff punisher, basically. And then in heat, you can actually use this as a mid check in the mid mix up, and then still be a pot in plus, because you know, you dash forward. But just be careful, because this. It's only plus 5. It's a lot of plus, but it's not that much plus. They can actually sidestep your health sweep, they can sidestep your forward forward 3, they can sidestep your forward forward 2. It's not that much plus, so be careful. But you're still plus. It's good. Not bad at all. And, uh, what else? Your game plan is mostly that. You can use down forward 3 2 as a mid poke as well. And sometimes finish it if they like. You know, punish it because it's punishable. This is one slot. They like punishing it too much. Sometimes finish it, get a million damage because they try to punish it. Sometimes finish it, but charge it up. Especially at the wall, it's pretty strong. Oh. Sorry about that. But yeah, your general game plan is something like that. Not too different. Not too different to Tekken 7s. The only difference is, you have like better bits to work with, 442, CD1 plus 2, and the rocket. While in Tekken 7, you mostly use down back 2, which was mo more or less one of your best mids. You use size Watch Tank 3 as well, because you kind of needed another mid that tracked well. In here, you don't need this as much, but you can sometimes use it as well. 444 is also amazing to do, in Tekken 7 and in Tekken 8, but since we have 442, Port 44 as a mix up option isn't as good, but if they like staying down, this is why you, you use. Still an amazing move. And still a counter launcher. Oh, that's not Port 44. Still a counter launcher. Into, you know, whatever combo. Does decent damage. Decent damage. And that was a hard combo, but, you know, 74 damage is not that bad. It wasn't that hard of a combo anyway. Dash electric, whatever. So, yep, I think that's about it. More or less. 
So this character, let's summarize very very quickly. This character, I think, got nerfed from CNT because of the new string and because of the 3-1. I think this character is not that good when compared to others because he doesn't have as many good tools. For example, Law got a new low, a lot of people got the heat smashes that are a plus, a lot of people have a lot of good lows that are new. A lot of people have a lot of new knowledge checks that they can abuse, a lot of new mind games that they can abuse. Well, Kazuya didn't really get any of that, but he got his mix-up game a little bit safer. Maybe a little bit stronger as well. But, as I said, he's not bad in any regards. I can't say he's bad because 442 carries this character. This Oh my goodness. Lit this literally carries him. But, I can't say he's good when Jin's down 2 exists. I really cannot say that. Or when, I don't know, Azucena exists. Or when Raven exists. Or when June exists. My god, June. I can't say that he's good. Or even Jack is good as well. Not bad at all. So, yeah. That's gonna be it. I think this was... This was a long vid, but I normally do long vids. You guys are accustomed to it anyway. Like, I'm, my speed labs are so long normally. So, yeah. Everyone... Big, big thank you for watching. This was like more or less the changes from Tekken 7 to Tekken 8 and uh, how they compare, the game plan, and the how you actually have to think about the character. The 442 you abuse is like the most important part about him. But big thing about this is that you have to know that this character is gonna change 100% from now, from CBT to release. 100%. But the one thing we all have to pray for is that he doesn't get nerfed. Or if he does get nerfed, don't touch his 442. If they touch his 442 and they nerf it, for example, make it minus 10. Character's done for. I don't think it's usable anymore. More or less, anyway. Maybe I'll maybe I'll think of a way, but yeah. YouTube, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you for watching, and till later.